Wilson, who was born in Los Angeles to parents who were poets, artists, educators. And at age 14, Andre wrote a sh storytelling essay in his junior high school English class in which he stated, sometimes when a story does not have a theme, it is no good. <laughs> Following the deaths of his parents in 2012, Andre resumed writing, now generating stories to be performed live on stage. He's performed his stories at San Francisco's Marsh Theater, The Moth, Busting Out Storytelling, Bay Area Storytelling Festival, The Shout, TMI Storytelling, and The Monkey House. <clears throat> he posts many of his performances on YouTube, where you will find them. Later this month, Andre will perform in Las Vegas at the Beat Coffee House. Let's give him a warm welcome. <clears throat> When I first started performing in public, it was at the Hercules Public Library. From the I-80 Freery, north of here, you can see the trapezoid, red brick, green glass building rise atop Civic Center Hill as the most modern building this former dynamite factory town will probably ever build. Once a month, on Tuesday evenings, before the librarian flickered the lights to chase us out before the library closes at nine, the poet of the square table met in the multi-purpose activity room for the poetry workshop. There are three of us, and if lucky, four poets, spread out around a square conference table to make our group appear larger. <laughs> Pushing 50, I was the youngest poet in the group. In fact, 20 years separated me from the rest. An elderly black woman read love poems from a chapbook she published years ago. A Japanese man read Tonka poems from his laptop. A bespectacled white man read nature poems typed on fine white paper. But the poet, so-called, that I remember the most was Emma. Emma, have you ever heard the phrase uh, uh, phoning it in? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, it means we do something only half ass but not being fully present for the work. Well, Emma was present, but she was not a poet. <laughs> <laughs> she usually arrived late to the group, dragging a knitting bag filled with yarn knitting needles, or whatever project she was knitting at the time, be it booties or a scarf. The poets would rotate around reading their work. But when we got to Emma, I kid you not, she pulled out of her knitting bag a grab at the last minute, off the library shelf, copy of Robert Frost, mm -hmm. and read, two roads diverged in the yellow wood. <laughs> I'm sorry, I could not travel both. <laughs> then she resumed her knitting. And the poets went around in a circle until it got back to her, at which point she read uh, uh, Emily Dickinson. Because I could not stop for death, it kindly stopped for me. And the three times I attended the Poets of the Square Table, I did not recall Emma ever once reading a poem of her own. Because for Emma, the Poets of the Square Table was not a poetry workshop, but a poetry appreciation 
group. As long as you can share somebody else's poem, usually somebody who died before I was born, she felt no need to write and share a poem of her own. You know how they say you should not um, text while someone is uh, telling a story? Mm -hmm. Well, Emma did something that was worse. She knit it. <laughs> I would be uh, reading a line from my poem. I press my fingertips against the vibrating glass and feel the throbbing heartbeat of the ocean. And I would hear in the background the, the soft click, 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 click of Emma's knitting needles. She would not even look up from her knitting to watch my reading, but kept herself focused on the knit one, per one, knit one, per one, knit one, per one of her knitting. When I finished reading, she would say, that was a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> then resume knitting. She would not even offer uh, criticism. One Tuesday evening, I decided to try a slam poem on the group. I stood up from the square table and backed away from the risen poets staring at me, except for Emma, who knitted with her head down. And I began. Could you love me if I'm bald? I don't wear Beyonce's mop. <laughs> or me, Mr. T's mohawk. Could you love me if I'm bald? Emma lost focus on anything and began to drop stitches. Oh, 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 oh. I continued. My scalp shines a blank bill, boy. I'm never seen. Praise the Lord. Should you love me if I'm bald? Emma, oh, 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 oh. I imagine Emma looking at the monstrosity she knitted while attempting to listen to my slam poetry, and I imagine her saying, Ooh, I better give this word to Jimmy for Christmas. What Emma actually said after I finished, Andre, that poem was much too loud and too fast. The nature poet agreed. Yes, Andre, that poem was much too loud and too fast. <laughs> The poets continued reading their own work, except for Emma, who read Frost uh, Dickinson. One Tuesday evening, Emma announced, I'm sorry, but this is the last meeting of the poets of the square table. I protested, nobody told me, nobody sent me an email where I'm going to go. She continued, as a going away present, I bought everyone copies of this book. She reached into a knitting bag and pulled out glossy tabletop copies of a book on American poets, containing pictures, photographs, of poems, bios. My eyes lit up. <gasps> she gave a copy to the love poet and a copy to the Taka poet, and a copy to the nature poet. Then she turned to me and, and apologized. I'm sorry, Andre, but I did not know you were coming. <laughs> you see, I did not bring a copy for you. The poets here have been with our group from the very beginning. You're a newcomer. Imagine that. Calling me a man pushing 50, a newcomer. The lights of the library flickered. The library announced, the library will be closed again in 15 minutes. Please bring your items to the checkout counter. Emma grabbed her knitting bag and fled. <laughs> the poets lingered in the last moments that remained of the poets of the square table. The only thing I had to offer them was this promise. I'm going to find some place to perform my work. As I drove away and looked at my rearview mirror, 
at the library on the hill. Its lights flickered and extinguished like the light of the sinking Titanic. The demise of the Poets of the Square Table stranded me on the southeastern shore of San Pablo Bay. Since that time, I have traveled the road not traveled by Emma. <laughs> <laughs> As I performed at coffee shops, bars, and nightclubs. I soon found my strength in storytelling and switched. And I found that the same techniques over which Emma dropped stitches, audiences loved. And I learned this lesson from Emma. Sometimes I can improve a poem or a story just by changing the audience. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That was Andre Lamont Wilson.